Let's get right into AB 2334. Now, this is something I just wanted to share. I think, um, uh, you know, Alex and I had met uh, regarding this. And so far for the audience, this is really um, what I, uh, so the map that we're building right now is based off AB 2334. And why we're super excited about this in part, bill in particular is it says, if there is a discrepancy between the zoning and the land use designation, then you go with the um, the uh, higher density that uh, uh, that's showing, and we walk through a couple sites in Chatsworth in uh, Silver Lake area, and we saw um, this is pretty prevalent actually, right? And so we're excited about this bill because when we ran the numbers and we looked at it, there were sites that two x base density based on this. So like, oh, instead of sixty by right, you go one hundred twenty by right. Well. Oh my God, that's amazing because if you already are two X at base and then you start to use uh, the density bonus program for that, or, you know, if it's TOC, then even better, then, you know, you're netting overall hundred units more. And, and we've identified multiple of these, some rarer sites, four X density, like, you know, we have to do a double take and go, wait, really four X density, but then it wasn't as much density as maybe the 2x that allows goes from 60 to 120 if that makes sense so they kind of balance out it's not i'm not trying to communicate it's 4x density of 60 <laughs> right where you're getting 240 but it was lesser units that um, you could build but nevertheless you're still getting more base density so that's kind of what we're super excited about is if you know la city planning kind of um publish this and we're monitoring um, what their guidance is. That's really what's important. What's their What their guidance is on this bill, that's gonna be a huge game changer, I think for market rate developers in that there's gonna be more opportunity to put more doors than previously. Um, well, oh. and, and and from what you're describing, when all of a sudden the density doubles, yeah, uh, that would probably be the most positive news for sellers <laughs> because if yeah. I'm sitting on a site where I thought I could, could do 60 units right. and let's say it's you know 10 million dollars right. and now it's 120 units right. you know it's got to be it, it has to be you know more yeah. um i the, the only real consideration uh to follow mm -hmm. is and even with even like toc right. transit oriented community when it first okay. passed theoretically I, theoretically we have a site mm -hmm. that has been designed designated as toc you know 1 2 3 or 4 Right. And, and and in that circumstance, people look at that and say, oh, well, it's TOC3. I can get all this additional density. Mm -hmm. Boom. I'm ready to roll. Right. Well, you still have to take time, right. by the way. Right. You may have the right to do that. You have to still go pursue that right. Exactly. With a TOC, with a TOC site, you yeah. still have to go and get your team together, design. You have the architect do a massing density study to understand what it is so that right. you can double check the math right. to see that you okay you can take a site that may be by right 50 now could be 75 but i still need to go work through the site you need site plan approval right of course if you really need to spend those six nine 12 months yeah. getting that site plan approval right and this gets into i'm a little conservative yeah. i'm not going to start and a lot of the funds i've worked for don't have the right to go after a zoning case, mm. they need to have entitlements in place. I see. So, so while you're going to get that pure, you know, signed off right to that TOC three, for right. example, right. before I would then say, okay, architect, structural engineer, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and the various six, seven other necessary specialty consultants, acoustical, waterproofing, I'm not going to have everybody you know, or, or until I know I'm moving through that system and I know I'm getting closer and closer to yes, yeah. then I might start peeling off and saying, okay, let's take the drawings to design development level. You know, I'm, I've met with people who have, you know, I'm like, oh, well, you don't have entitlements yet. So can, we could probably still work on the design a little bit. It's like, oh no, we can't. We're already finished with our drawings. I'm like, yeah. wow, you really went while you're going through the entitlement phase, you had your architect and engineer finish all your drawings. I mean, that's very aggressive. That's what, you know, nimble developers can do. Right. Funds don't normally operate that way. They right. might have a division like fund A, 
right. goes after entitlements. And once they've locked it up and they've controlled the process and the result is what they want, right. then the, then fund B buys it from fund A and implements the project and then may even sell the building to fund C. That's like a, you know, like a core fund or, a, you know, something like or a REIT. Right. Um, you know, so there's a way that a development company can control it from beginning to end using different funds mm -hmm. um, all under the same roof. But in most cases, people don't want to take that risk because they can't underwrite the risk. Right. Tell right. me when we no longer in the public realm mm -hmm. and then I'll tell you what I'll pay you. Exactly. Good. Great point. Great point. And uh, but at least out of the bills, there was one that passed that has right uh, a direction in in positivity for developers and sellers, property owners alike. That's really um, what we're excited about.